Hi everyone, in today's episode I want to show you how I made the handrail for my stairs at home. Now, we've been living without the handrail for almost five years and it was just because it kept on shifting down the list of priorities. But our son is six months old, so he's threatening to start crawling and there is nothing like a crawling baby. It's obviously focus your attention and make you pull your finger out. Now, to make sure that it is safe and that it's compliant with the necessary regulations, I looked up the regulations around stairways on the British building standards. Now there are two main things really. The one is the height, which it has to be between 900 millimeters and a meter, measured from the pitch of the stairs. So I made it about 950. And the gap between the spindles, which is mostly relevant to baby safety, and that just has to be less than 100 millimeters, so minus about, I think, 95 millimeters, just to be on the safe side. So with that said, I took careful measurements of the existing stairs, and then I drew two quick designs on SketchUp. The one with the spindles coming at a 45 degree angle, and the other one with the more traditional spindles perpendicular to the floor. Now, my wife and I both liked the first design a little bit more, but it was close, so I decided to put it to a vote on Instagram. And we were really surprised by the overwhelming vote for the more traditional way of doing it. And it helped us decide, so that is what I went with. So as material, I decided to go with birch ply. And there are a couple of reasons for that. The one is that it comes in sheets that are of uniform thickness and size. So it is quite easy to work with, it is stable and it just makes the process of building and working with it quite easy. And then second of all, the, I've used it in a fair few pieces of furniture throughout my house. So that continuity of material that I wanted to maintain throughout the house was important to me. And then thirdly, up until recently, it used to be actually quite cost effective, but because of the inflation, thanks to COVID and the sanctions against Russia that's on at the moment because of the war, the prices of this have almost doubled. Fortunately, I bought a fair bit of it um, at the call it old prices, and I have some stock, but <clears throat> it is getting uh, quite expensive. So we'll see how long it remains on trend um, as it has been for the last five years. Now, that being said, I use a lot less material than I thought I would. So if you want to splash out on a really nice piece of furniture in your house using real timber, then a staircase railing is probably a good place to do that. So as far as the parts are concerned, there are basically four parts to this handrail. Number one is the outer frame made from 18 millimeter burst ply, which is kind of the standard thickness that you get it in. Number two is the spindle that is 32 millimeter birch, which I had left over from a previous project with the ends cut at an angle. Number three is the spacer that goes in between each spindle. That is also 18 millimeter piece of birch with the ends cut at the same angle. And the last one is this custom made uh, newel that I'll show you at the end a little bit more detail on. The construction itself wasn't that complicated, but the thing I think people find most useful is to see how I've made this and I've, let's call it the angled dado joint. And the way I've done that is by stacking the outer frame with the spacers, and it then creates this uh, perfect angle for the spindles to slot in. The idea for the joint I got after watching a video from Paul Sellers, where he made a workbench a couple of years ago on his channel. I'll put a link in the description. The whole principle behind it is that you stack layers of plywood to give it extra strength, but also to create these very strong joints without having to do traditional joinery, which is obviously a lot more advanced. So Paul is very generous with his knowledge. Um, he makes great videos, so make sure to check those out as well. Um, anyway, that's that for the design. Let's go and have a look at how I made it. First up were the spindles. I used these two pieces of 32 millimeter birch ply that I had left over from a previous project. To cut it, I'm using a rail saw, as you can see here. This is an incredible bit of kit, but you definitely don't need it to make something similar. Most timber merchants worth their salt will be able to cut your material for you to these kind of required sizes. I'd suggest that you at least have it cut to the correct width. It's called rib cuts, 
by your supplier. They use industrial saws that can make very accurate and repeatable cuts that is difficult to replicate at home. It also saves you a lot of time, so make sure you buy from someone who can provide you with this service if you don't have the tools yourself at home. I should also say, I only had this extra thick plywood by chance left over from a previous project that specifically required it. If I didn't have it, I would simply glue two lengths of 18mm ply together to give me a 36mm thick spindle, similar to the rest of the build, which you'll see later on in the video. Next on the cutting table is the 18mm sheet I use for all the other parts. When I cut, I like placing my sheet material on a firm piece of foam. This acts as a type of spoil board which protects the surface of your workbench and it also adds to the safety of your cutting since it hides the blade inside the foam without adding any real additional resistance to the cut. It also provides a firm and uniform base for your material that prevents pinching and that dreaded danger of track saws which is kickback. One thing that might be different for each set of stairs you encounter in the real world is the actual angle at which it is constructed. Theoretically it should be 45 degrees but in reality it will be something close to that. In my case it was 47 and a half degrees so that is what I'm setting the mitre saw at. Using a stop block to ensure I cut all my spaces exactly the same size I then continue to cut these with angles on both ends. Now I can already hear you asking how you can do this without access to a mitre saw so let me show you. Firstly, I taped up an 18mm and a 32mm piece of off-cut plywood with some brown tape to create two sets of spaces. The function of the tape is twofold. Firstly, it increases the thickness of my spacer by a fraction. And secondly, it prevents the spacer from sticking to the base when I glue up the mitre box. You'll see what I mean in a second. Using a thin piece of MDF as the base, I clamped the two spaces between three larger pieces of ply that would eventually become the mitre box. It is effectively a double barrel mitre box with the ability to take two thicknesses of the material I'm using. In my opinion, I think having the material fit this snugly inside the mitre box just aids the accuracy of the cut substantially. After the box has dried, I cut the guide slot at 47.5 degrees with a mitre saw that was still set at this angle. I realize in this shot it looks like I have my fingers dangerously close to the blade to hold back the saw guard. Now, this might very well be the case, but at the time it felt okay. Please, please, please ensure you use your power tools at your own level of risk that you are comfortable with. Something that kept bothering me a little was that I might need other angles than the 47.5 degrees I measured. My trigonometry from school is rusty at best, but it felt like the most likely angle I would need in addition to this one is its complementary angle, so I cut another slot for this as well, just in case. There were two pieces of plywood that had to fit into a set space between other pieces of the existing staircase. It was the bottom piece that ran along the bottom of the rail and the short vertical piece at the very top where the new rail met the story newel. I hope I have that terminology correct. So I took my time to get these two pieces to fit correctly first. I also wanted to be 100% sure I got the spacing of the spindles correct. For this I played around with the offcuts from the spindles for quite a while before I decided to start gluing these up. I didn't capture the footage for this, but you can see here that I also made a 90 degree guide cut in the mitre block. Here I'm using it to make the first manual cut for the topmost spindle. Because I knew my larger sander wouldn't fit in between the spindles once they were all glued up, I set myself up in the garden and sanded the two faces of each spindle before fitting them. Sanding is something you endure rather than enjoy, so I tried to do as much of it with the aid of a machine rather than having to struggle to get into the nooks and crannies post-assembly. After all the fitting and checking and standing back and scratching my head, I finally pre-drilled some holes and started to commit to building the damn thing. I started from the top, making sure each of the three pieces that had to be mounted to the existing structure fit tightly to each other and were mounted properly. Looking back through the footage now, I'm glad I did take time to make this mitre block. Here I'm cutting a few spaces I needed to space the first few spindles that had square ends at the top for which the standard pre-cut spacers wouldn't have worked. The first five spindles were all shorter than the pre-cut ones and met the top rail at a 90 degree angle. It made sense to fit these whilst the whole rail was fully fitted in place since this was the top end of the rail that would be least forgiving if I had any variance in it. With a bit more checking and double checking to make sure things are straight, I fit the first full length spindle before taking the rail down for the rest of the spindles to be fit on the ground where they could be laid flat. The spindle you're seeing here is the one that received the handrail and had a little bit of an angle cut to it. I knew that this junction of the spindle, the top rail and the handrail 
would be important to get right visually. So I took my time to get the angles and the clamps as tight as I could. Once that joint was made and the first full length spindle was in, it set the final angle of the handrail. The rest of the build was just a matter of adding the remaining spindles on by gluing and clamping them into place along with the spacers. Now between gluing up the railing in my front room at home and the footage of my new workshop you are seeing here, about three months lapsed during which I worked on other projects. That and the birth of our son kept me busy, but I'm super excited to be settled into this new space now. I will add a few videos about the workshop into this description if you wanted to check out those too. Here I'm filling any gaps where the joints were not as tight as they could have been with wood filler. I discovered these tubes of wood filler from Ron Seal that I really like. The problem with wood filler is that you more often than not use very little at a time. So if you buy them in those plastic pots they traditionally come in, then they inevitably dry out and harden before you come even close to using even half of it. This wastage always annoyed me and these tubes go a long way to reduce it since it doesn't get dry as quickly. I'll put a link in the description if you wanted to give it a try too. Once the filler was dry, it was simply a matter of working my way through the different grits of sanding paper, starting with the 60 grit and working my way up to 240 grit on the exposed edges of the plywood. Here I am using my palm router to round over the edges of all the plywood to make sure it's smooth and pleasant to the touch. When working with plywood, especially when you have these exposed edges, it is well worth taking your time to get the sanding right. Here I'm hand sanding the whole piece again just to make sure that I didn't miss any sharp edges. To make sure I get a good finish, I took my time to dust the whole piece well and then apply two layers of Osmo oil, a finish I've used for all the projects including my floors in this house. Now that it was done, it was time to take it home to be fitted. I left the handrail long on purpose so I could see what it looked like when installed. Here I'm cutting it to its final length and then just a little bit of tidy up with a bit of sandpaper. From this point onwards, fitting it to the existing staircase was easy. I simply drilled pilot holes and using clamps to make sure I have a tight fit, screwed the handrail to the ledge of the staircase. Originally, I was going to have the last spindle at the bottom bolt directly to the existing staircase. But I think because I left the project alone for so long, I cocked it up and I didn't add that last spindle. This means that structurally the handrail was way too flimsy which is why I had to make this custom needle post I'm showing here. To do this I cut 6 layers of birch ply on the CNC and glued them together for clamping overnight. This gave me this thick and sturdy post which I could use to anchor the new rail to the existing stairs. As with the handrail it is well worth the effort to make sure you sand it properly to get a good finish on the exposed edges. Back at home I prepared the existing newel to receive the dowel by first planing off the paint and then drilling a deep 20mm hole. I also drilled the same diameter hole in the new post itself. Here you guys have to forgive the footage. My camera ran out of battery but fortunately I captured this footage on my phone which is fine but it isn't portrait since it was meant for social media. Sorry about that. To hide the bolts I filled each of the holes with a dowel and then cut it flush using my handsaw. After a few bits of touch up the railing was done and as you can see from this footage it came out quite well. I like it and it makes for a nice alternative to the box standard spindles that you can purchase off the shelf. That's it for this episode folks, thank you very much for watching. I know I always ask you guys to subscribe and press the ring button and please do if you want to, but if I can ask you a favor, if you can just send this video to your one friend that's into DIY that you think might enjoy this, um, that'll be much appreciated. Until next time, goodbye.